Okay, in this video I want to show you how to use this dusting brush. So first let's talk about why you might want one in the first place. Um, a lot of times when you start drawing something that's a little bit more uh, large or complex, you will find that your hand gets on the page and you need to dust some of your fine little graphite or colored pencil dust off in order to rest your hand on the page. The other reason that it's really useful is to remove those eraser crumbs from when you erase on the page. But what I find is that I always tell my students to get one of these dusting brushes and it doesn't matter which brand you buy. Um, they'll get the dusting brush and then I see them using it in all kinds of crazy ways that aren't the best way to be using this. So let's look down at the um, page and I'm going to show you actually how to use this and I'll give you a couple of alternatives as well. So here we've got this drawing of Ganesha, the <coughs> Hindu god, and um, this is a very tight, complex drawing. So you can see that I've got really fine detail in here and it's really easy to accidentally get too much detail or the wrong line in there. So what I'm going to do is erase and really refine this area and what happens is that when I'm erasing, I produce all of these little tiny crumbs. Now, with my dusting brush, if I'm using it properly, I am going to briskly do one or two brisk movements of the brush across the page. Um, I want to maybe tap it a little bit, that sometimes with a little flick of your wrist like that will actually remove those eraser crumbs better. Um, you could brush it lightly and I think of it like I want to do short bursts, maybe one to two wipes. And I tend to just go in one direction because I think that maybe that's going to smear things less. So remember the reason that you aren't using your hands to remove those is because your hands have oils in them that will smear the page. So this can actually pick up that fine graphite dust and smear that along the page too. So that's why I say tap it sort of lightly with a flick of the wrist, brush it lightly in short bursts, and then if you still have crumbs that are sticking, this is where, let me give myself some crumbs here that are gonna stick. This is where you're going to want to, if you can't get them removed with the big dusting brush, switch to just an old paint brush. So this is a watercolor or acrylic brush that I had in the studio. And one of my students used it. You can see it's got paint all over it. <clears throat> Probably a, a whole bunch of my students used this and then left it with a little bit too much paint in it and left it to dry. So these bristles got really stiff and kind of clumpy. And no matter what I do, they're still stiff and clumpy. And so that's the perfect time to switch to using it for a dusting brush. So what I can do here is I can use that in a really short little burst and remove those crumbs that might not otherwise be removable with the big brush. These are such loose, um, long hairs and bristles that it won't always have the power that it needs to actually remove some of the tighter crumbs that are stuck to the page a little bit more. So switching to the short brush gives you that ability. Um, if you still get little crumbs that are sticking to the page, go ahead and check out this video because I have a good way for you to um, remove those with another tool, but that's in a separate video, so check that out. So now I want to show you some ways that you don't want to use your dusting brush. So we're just going to switch here just to keep it interesting. Here's an apple. So one way that you would not want to use your dusting brush is by, first let me give you some crumbs that we're gonna work on here. Okay, one way that really you don't wanna do is move your brush back and forth. And what's happening there is that I'm dragging all the way across here and I'm picking up all this graphite and then I'm pushing it back onto the page. So what I do is I just do one or two little brisk short strokes and I go in one direction. The other thing you don't want to do, and I see students do this all the time, they go like this. And what you're effectively doing is smearing your drawing just as much as you would if you were to take your hand and rub it over there. 
The other thing you want to be careful about is that if you hit the wooden part of the brush on the page, like if you're pressing really hard and it starts to drag or you dent it like that, you can basically put a little dent into your page because remember there are high spots and low spots of the paper and the force of the wood will dent it so that then if you were to go to draw over that, you might actually see that dent in the page. And then the last thing that I don't <laughs> recommend you do <clears throat> is that I don't recommend you use this brush for anything other than cleaning up eraser crumbs. So, you know, I work with little kids and little kids put all kinds of objects all over the place and they're real handsy and they like to touch everything. And so a lot of times my little goofy kids will take this and run it across their face or they're going to like start to play with it on their hair and pretend that it's a real brush. So you don't want to do something like that because it will pick up the oils and the dirt um, or paint or you know food whatever other uh, objects or items that you have in the studio that could smear onto this this will be sensitive enough to pick it up so the only other thing I use it for is to wipe the work surface table when I'm done I want to clean up all those eraser crumbs and then I just kind of dust them right into the trash so I will use it on the paper <laughs> I will use it on my work surface and that's it so hopefully those tips are going to help you guys out and um, I really think that having one of these in your uh, studio or in your um, supply kit is really valuable. It is not a waste of a few dollars to have something like this to keep yourself from um, brushing your page accidentally or even worse sometimes I see people blowing the eraser crumbs off of their page and then they spit their gum out on it <laughs> or something like that. So. This is a great investment and then go ahead and take one of those used brushes and keep it as a backup so that you have one for tighter bristles. So I hope that helps you guys out. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, LZM Studio, where I frequently release quick tips and all kinds of different ideas about drawing. Also check out my Facebook and my Instagram page. I like to show um, photographs of my artwork, of my students' artwork, and share funny stories from my students on those pages. And then check out my website, lzmstudio.com, where you're going to find more inspiration and um, full-length, detailed tutorials.